Come on in. We have a great old black and white mystery movie from the 1930s or 1940s here on Hastings Mystery Theater. Our feature film will begin following our movie introduction by our host and mystery master, Randall Schaefer, who shares with our viewers some great background information on the film. Leave us your comments in the comment section and hit the like and subscribe buttons. This helps our channel grow and then stay with us until the end. You'll be glad you did. Coming soon to Hastings Mystery Theater, The Mystery of the Mary Celeste, aka The Phantom Ship. It's a 1935 mystery horror film. During a horrific storm at sea, the crew realizes that there is a murderer among them, who is killing them off one by one. This story is loosely based around the real-life mystery of the ghost ship the Mary Celeste. It stars, Bella Lugosi, Shirley Gray and Arthur Margotson. Don't miss, The Phantom Ship. It seems that you like watching these old mystery films from the 1930s and 40s as much as we all do. If you'd like to show your appreciation in a tangible way, then why not share a little love by giving us a one-time small donation? We'd appreciate that, as it will encourage us to continue on with this work of bringing these forgotten gems to you on a regular basis. Simply click on the donate link below, in this video's description, and while you're right there you can click on our mystery merch shop as well. Or visit us on Facebook. Or find our free bonus movie link. Thank you so much. Now here's Randall Schaefer. Good evening. Welcome to Hastings Mystery Theater. I'm your host and mystery master, Randall Schaefer. Tonight, the corridors of mystery take us back to 1938 for a 20th Century Fox movie, Mr. Moto's Gamble. This is the third film in 20th Century Fox's Mr. Moto series. But the script was intended to be a Charlie Chan movie. It was supposed to be Charlie Chan at ringside. But the actor who had played Charlie Chan for 16 films, Warner Oland, was an alcoholic. And over time, the alcohol destroyed his health and his marriage. He went into a depression. And while filming Charlie Chan at ringside, life just became too hard. He walked off the set, never worked again, and died a year later. The script was reworked in tonight's Mr. Moto movie. Mr. Moto is 20th Century Fox's second Oriental detective. If the Charlie Chan series was popular, maybe America would embrace a second Oriental detective. Hollywood actually had three of them. Beside Mr. Moto and Charlie Chan, monogram films had Mr. Wong. We may show one of those one of these weeks. But none of these Orientals were played by uh, Orientals. They were all Anglos. Hollywood was not as liberal as it is now. Hollywood executives were as racist as any other industry in the 1930s. The character of Mr. Moto is the only one of the three Oriental detectives to be born in the U.S. He is thoroughly American. He set the pole vault record at Stanford University when he was a student there and he's an expert with weapons and hand-to-hand -hand combats of all types. Mr. Moto is played by Peter Lorre. He was born in Hungary in 1904. He came to the U.S. in the 1930s. In tonight's movie, a boxer dies after being knocked out. Mr. Moto determines he was murdered while in the ring. Let's return to 1938 and enjoy Mr. Moto's Gamble.
location of the pistol indicates it could have fallen from the hand of the dead man. But there's also the possibility that it might have been placed there by a murderer. You gentlemen, as uh, students of criminology, must determine which is correct. For our next class, will you please report whether these uh, clues indicate homicide or suicide? Class dismissed. You sure make a swell corpse knockout. Thanks. I guess it just comes natural. Should you find tonight's problem difficult, will you please remember there's no situation that science and skill cannot master. Oh, yeah? Suppose you're about to make an arrest and the suspect pulls a gun on you. Yes. What good is science and skill then? Shall we demonstrate? Take it, please. Now, draw the gun and uh, threaten me. Now? Whenever you are ready. <laughs> Any other questions, sir, uh, gentlemen? No, I don't have time for me. <laughs> Mr. Moto, my watch is gone. Somebody must have stolen it. One of us detectives must be a crook. Who ever heard of a crooked cop? <laughs> One moment, please. When did you last notice your watch, Mr. Lee? Why, I'm sure I had it not over five minutes ago. Oh, so? And what time is it now, Mr. Wellington? Oh. Seven minutes to ten, Professor. Your watch, Mr. Lee? I'll take care of this guy, Mr. Modo. I'm from the pickpocket detail. Come on, light fingers. Oh, wait, please. You can undoubtedly explain your sleight of hand. I cannot tell, but fairly, Mr. Moto. I just can't help taking things that attract my eye. Gee, he's a kleptomaniac. Thanks, pal, thanks. You must control your uh, taking ways, Mr. Wellington, or your first case as a detective will be the arrest of yourself. That's just the reason I come here to take this crime course. You see? Whenever I lift something, my conscience smacks me right in the kisser. And I says to myself, knockout, you gotta take this thing back. But I can't, because I forget where I got it. But now things are gonna be different. Because if I studied to be a detective, I could get clues on myself and solve my own larceny. To recognize one's faults requires intelligence. To admit them requires courage. Congratulations, Mr. Wellington. Thanks, thanks. Class dismissed. <laughs> oh, Mr. Moto. Yes, Lee. I thought you would like to know I got a letter from Pop yesterday. Oh, you did? Mm hmm. He sent his best to you. Thank you. And uh, how is your honorable father enjoying his home life in beautiful Honolulu? <laughs> he seems fine, but he kind of worries about me. You see, I'm really supposed to be studying art here at the university. But gosh, I want to be a detective. <laughs> I understand. My parents wanted me to be an acrobat. <laughs> but uh, don't worry, Lee. I shall write to your father, and I shall tell him that you are my most promising student. Huh? Gee, thanks, Mr. Moto. Come on, Mahoney. Step on it. OK, Lieutenant. Here we are, Mr. Moto. Are you ready? This is Lee Chan, Lieutenant Riggs. I invited him to join us this evening. Lieutenant Riggs is the head of the homicide squad. Hiya, Lee. Glad to meet you, Lieutenant. I know your old man well. He's got plenty on the ball, eh, Moto? Oh, we are but floundering amateurs in contrast. Come on, let's go. Gosh, we must be doing 80. Are we going to a murder? No, just a simple little case of assault and battery. Get a load of these. Right at the ringside. Swell. Hello, champ. Hello, boys. How are you? Hi, Nick. Clip of McCoy been around? Just went in. Looks like another sellout, Gabby. It ought to be with the buildup I gave it. 
Call me up sometime, Clipper, when you need a good publicity man. No, thanks. I don't do much advertising in my line. <laughs> Hello, boys. How are you? How are you? Hello, Biff. Who's going to win tonight? Well, I ain't paid much attention to it. As far as I'm concerned, they're both pushovers. Mm. Nice, modest boy you got there, Nick. He's the champ, ain't he? What's the smart money saying tonight, Clipper? Five to four on a decision either way. Tame going for a long shot player like you. Maybe not. Ten grand says Stanton won't come out for the fifth. You're drinking too much, Nick. I got a hunch, that's all. Hey, wait a minute. Jerry Connors is Stanton's manager. He has been known to listen when somebody wanted his boy to take a dive. And miss a shot at the title, don't be a sap. Do you want to cover the ten grand or not? I'll lay it off, but the best I can get is three to one. Okay? Sure. And listen, Nick. I hope this hunch of yours isn't the kind you can put a frame around. Clipper, you'd suspect your own grandmother. Yeah, but you're not my grandmother. Want to bet on it? Somebody's dumping a lot of dough on Stanton, kissing the canvas on the fourth. These just came over the office teletype. Let me see it. Ten grand in St. Louis, twenty in Detroit, and fifteen in Pittsburgh. They're sure loaded for bear. You wait here. I'm going to phone. Well, if it ain't little Penny. Now, now, boys, be a little respectful to Miss Kendall. After all, 50 million women read what she says about the ducky wucky fighters. Is it true that wrestlers make better husbands than prize fighters, Penny? Good evening, morons. You all seem in your usual day's condition. Going to write a thrilling resume of what the well-dressed fighter will wear, Penny? Not a bad idea. Let's see. Uh, Frankie Stanton left the ring tastefully wearing black under both eyes. You'd feel pretty bad if Bill Steele forgot to duck, wouldn't you? Ah, but you don't have to duck when you're doing the swinging. Oh, 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 oh boy, that 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 well, here's my good luck penny. Hiya, baby. Is everything all right, Bill? Sure, I feel great, honey. You know, I used to like the fights until I fell in love like a sap. Now every punch you take hurts me more than it does you. Oh! oh. Forget it, honey. I can take care of Stanton. I just heard Nick Crowder's betting that Stanton won't answer the bell for the fifth round. Who told you about that bet? Only a dozen guys. So you and Nick Crowder ain't framing up on my boy, are you? You know I don't play that way. That's why I quit your stable. Let me see your hands. Oh, here he comes now. Give us a statement, Jerry. How's Stanton feeling? How's his bad eye? Stanton's eye's okay. You can say that my boy expects to win. And if he loses, we've got no alibis. Oh, See, you can't the talk same right around. Boys are saying that Nick's betting against me. Somebody's ribbing you, kid. Yeah, what makes you so sure? Nick's no sucker. He's not gonna go against a natural like you. They're just trying to get your goat. Now, you forget it and go out there and show him what you've got. I'm gonna kill that guy, Steele. But first, I'm gonna mess him up. <laughs> so that newspaper, sweetie, of his won't recognize him. Atta kid. I'll flatten that bozo. Hello, Mr. Benton. Hello, Riggs. What do you like? Well, I like Stanton. But it would hurt Linda's feelings if I bet against Steele. Okay, I'm satisfied with Stanton. How much do you want? Oh, five dollars? Ah, come on, make it ten. Well, that's plunging for me, but... Well, you've got a bet. <laughs> okay. He's president of the corporation that owns this joint. So? He's got more dollars than I got fingerprints. But he never bets more than a few bucks. One reason, possibly, why he remains rich. Gosh, that's a pretty girl sitting with your friend. That's his daughter, Linda. She's got her nose so high in the air, she's drowning in a rainstorm. I'll be rooting for you, Bill. Thanks, Linda. Hello, Mr. Benton. Good luck, Bill. I've got ten dollars on you. You're a cinch. <laughs> and here's Bill Steele coming into the ring with his manager, Tom McGuire. Look at the Rosin Fox. I uh, suppose you're betting on Bill Steele. Oh, well, naturally. By the way, I see you're making him your special assignment. My permanent one, I hope. You ought to match those two dames and let them fight it out. Quite an interesting commentary on our present civilization. The fair lady still swoon at the side of a handsome gladiator. Yes, sir. 
I'd still be single if I hadn't gone to the policeman's ball one year in a tiger skin. And here comes Frankie Stanton and rough, tough Boston. Yes, sir, ladies and gentlemen, it's going to be a rough, tough battle. Uh-oh, Frankie's got a bad cut over one eye there, but Jerry Connors, his manager, has told me that it won't make any difference. Uh-oh, hold everything. Here comes the champ, Biff Perret. as though your boyfriend had already gone to sleep on the canvas. Cheer up. Give him that good old moral support. Get low to Miss Benton over there. The young lady positively radiates with happiness. Sure. And the more the blood splashes, the happier she'll get. I'm the kind of a girl who likes a man without adhesive tape and iodine. Snap out of it. Bill Steele's got this fight in the bag already. Well, I hope you're right. Nick Proud is betting that Bill wins by a knockout and Nick doesn't exactly throw his shackles away. You said it, sweetheart. Oh. Hey, Nick, that's a screwy bet even for a guy like you. I got a hunch. And I'll mother it for you, Nicky boy. I got another hunch you'd be good at it, too, sister. Keep your hands up and watch that gun. Go in slugging, Bill. Don't let him get set and you've got him. Sure, sure. It better be. Some of the boys have got an idea Stanton may take a dive. They wouldn't like that. Don't worry. I won't. I'll let you do that. That's the stuff. Work on that eye. It's nearly open. Nobody can see it through ketchup. Now you keep that left up like I told you. He opens up that eye, he's got you. I didn't even want one eye to slam that lug around. There's knockout Wellington. Yeah, I better have a couple of the boys from the larceny detail watch him. He's liable to take the water bucket. Hey, buddy, where's the seat at? I need it. I'm sorry, mister, you're in the wrong seat. Oh, yes. No, this is my seat here. I, I'm sorry, sir. Well, I have my ticket right here in my... I, well, now, I know I had my ticket there because I bought... Well, I'm sorry, sir. This seat belongs to this gentleman. I don't care if this gentleman here... Uh, 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 well, I, I beg your pardon. I, I'm sorry I made a mistake. <laughs> there you are, sir. <laughs>
Ramsey. Let them do the fighting. Gee, I'm sorry, Lieutenant Riggs. Very exhilarating. Come on, boys. Keep it up. Keep it up. Get them going now. Clean the dirt off them gloves. Looks pretty good for your boy, Mac. You think you'll take him this round? I'm shooting the works. It's this round or never. Let me see that eye. That looks pretty bad. I'll close it up. I'll slap some collodion on it. Now get in there. And remember, this is the round. Sleeping powder in that right hand of his. Fast? I never even saw it land. Neither pen did it, Mr. Stern. No. I know you do it, Bill. Oh, you were wonderful, Bill. When I see you later. Sorry, Linda. I've got a date. Our race champion, Mr. Benton. I hope so. I'll see you later to collect on my hunch. Don't worry. I'm not leaving town. Brass fatting is a very strenuous sport. On the spectator? <laughs> I could have bought a couple of hats with that ten I dropped the bet. See what I tell you. Just like I said, if Bill used that short jab I taught him, he was a cinch. Now, in the second round, he comes out of his corner fighting like this. Never mind. We saw the fight. <laughs> May I congratulate you on your excellent taste in overcoats, Mr. Wellington? It's a beauty, ain't it? Oh, it's a marvelous piece of material and... Uh, Exquisitely tailored. To whom does it belong? <laughs> why, why, it's mine. Oh, so? I didn't notice you wearing it when you arrived at the ringside. Then I must have went and stole it. May I suggest a search for the clues to the real owner, Mr. Wellington? Okay, Professor. I'll have a report on it in 24 hours. Please. So, Lieutenant Riggs, the doctor wants you to stand in his dressing room. Trouble, Doc. This boy is dead. What? Dead? Oh, he can't be dead, Doc. You've got to do something. I've done everything possible. Well, he was the best fighter I had. He'll next you. I'm going to rematch him with the next champion. That's tough luck, Connors, but take it easy. Pardon me, Doctor. You have determined the cause of his death, I suppose. There is evidence of strangulation, such as usually follows concussion. He probably struck his head hard when he fell. But I was under the impression that the ring floor was padded with cork. About uh, two inches, I believe. Accidents like this have happened before, you know. Well, yes, but then you attach no importance to the discoloration around the injured eye? Why, no, it's just the usual result of a violent blow. And then it is usual, too, that the discoloration increases after death? 
Hmm. That is strange. Or perhaps some uh, foreign element was introduced into the cut over Mr. Stanton's eye. You mean he was poisoned? Gee, Mr. Moto, who do you think did it? I can tell you. I thought that knockout was a phony. That's the only way Steele could have stopped my boy. What's all this? If the lad has been murdered, it's the likes of you would know something about it. You and Steele wanted a shot at that title and you didn't care how you got it. Shut up, you two. Now listen to me. I mean, Mr. Riggs, but I'm certain you want to have this analyzed. What is it? Oh, just a small piece of uh, dried collodion. How about that? You're the one that swabbed that stuff over Stanton's eye. Sure. I'd murder my own boy. I'd throw away a crack at a million dollar gate. Why did Steele quit your camp? Because you wanted him to throw a fight. That's a lie. I kicked him out. Bring it up. Bring it up. Let the gentleman continue, Mr. Riggs. Much information can be obtained through tongues, loosened by anger. You're right. Come on, boys. What were you saying? Oh, now you're dumb. Where's that collodion you use in the ring? Why, uh, over here. All right, Mr. Moto, I'll have this analyzed, but I don't think there's any case here. The sock in the eye ain't homicide. Maybe his ticker went bad on him. Who knows? No one, except the coroner. What do you think, Doc? Under the conditions, an autopsy might be best. All right, all right. I hate to think I'd pay 12 bucks to be witness to a murder. But you started this. If there's any case here, you're in until we finish. Oh, so? I'm too honored, Mr. Riggs. Oh, this is Lieutenant Riggs speaking. Get me the coroner. You know, since I've been rubbing you, you got skin just like a baby. <laughs> I ain't hurting you, am I, Mr. Benton? You know, I don't know my own strength. Sure, sure. Uh, hand me the phone, knockout. Huh? Hello. This is Benton speaking. I'll send over my check for 10000 in the morning. That's okay. Too bad you guessed wrong. Nick says you was expecting him, boss. Not wasting any time on the payoff, are you? Well, I'm taking a champ to training camp in the morning, so I thought I'd pick up the dough tonight. No hard feelings, is there? No, not yet. Thirty grand's a lot of money, Nick. I might get a little sore if I found out you pulled a fast one. You laid the bet off, didn't you? <laughs> you think it was his own dough he lost the way he's beefing about it? I didn't have time to lay the bet off. So I'm the only guy that lost. That's too bad. Well, so long. And thanks a lot for the sugar. What are you taking it so hard for, boss? I've seen you lose more fish than that before. You're wrong, Sammy. That 30 grand is only part of it. I'm responsible for 20% of the syndicate's losses on those out-of-town bets. Oh, gee. I forgot about that. 10, 20, 35, 60, 90, 100 grand. What a shellac. It's funny, ain't it? How guys in six different cities make the same screwy bet that Nick does. Yeah. Very funny. Say, boss, do you think I that... I don't know. Maybe. You ordered Steele to work on Stanton's bad eye. Of course I did. That's what any manager tell his fighter. What about the collodion Connors used on Stanton's eye? Pardon me, the collodion shows no trace of poison. Are you positive this is the same bottle you used in the ring? Sure it is. Nick Crowder took you for 30 grand on that fight. Sure. So I killed Stanton for the pleasure of losing a bet. Don't make me laugh. You still insist you want $30,000 on a mere, uh, hunch? Yeah, just a hunch. I've told you everything I know. McGuire did tell me to work on that eye, but I would have anyway. Now look, look, I'm trying to help you. The grand jury's downstairs now, working on this case. So what? I don't know anything about that poison, and that's all I can tell you. <laughs> Scotty 
we've got to do something to help him. It seems the manly art of bashing beezers has suffered a large and unbecoming black eye. Well, somebody's got to be the goat. Yeah, for a bunch of crooked gamblers. Scotty, I tell you, they're ganging up on him. Arrested, indicted, suspended. You know he's a clean boy with a great future. Look, I don't want him to fight. I'd be happy if he never stepped into a ring again. But when he does quit, it's not going to be with all this over his head. Penny, there's nothing we can do about it. In spite of the way you feel about Bill. But all I ask is that the Chronicle put up his bail. Uh, 25,000 bucks. Look at the news value. Chronicle campaigns for clean sportsmanship. Think of the circulation angle. I'll sell Bill Steele to the women readers. We'll make this a campaign against the gambling syndicates. Men like Clipper McCoy and Nick Crowder. Oh, Scotty, if you'll turn me loose on this, I'll have this town so deep in tears that they'll be using canoes for taxi cabs. Get me the publisher. Oh. Hello, Charlie. I want to see Bill Steele. Sure, Penny. Just sit down a minute. Well, so long, Pete. <laughs> Well, hello, Penny. I was just going to call you at your paper. Mr. Benton just posted my bail. Well, it was Father's check, but don't forget it was my idea. Well, that's... that's swell. I'll say it is. Now I can train for the Moran fight. Say, what are you doing here anyway? Oh, I don't know. I... I just love jails. You feel so happy when you walk out of them. <laughs> you said it. I suppose you'll print the story of Bill's release in your paper, Miss Kendall? Well, I've been scooped on it, but it's still my special assignment. Oh, uh, we'd better hurry. You know, Father's waiting to drive us up to camp. Our country house is just a few miles from where we'll train. How nice. Uh, can we drop you off at your office? Oh, no, thank you. I uh, have a car. Okay, Penny. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, Miss Kendall. Through the kindness of Lieutenant Riggs, I am happy to exhibit a photograph of one of the boxing girls used in that fatal prize fight. You will notice the picture clearly indicates the poison stain on the glove. Yeah, yeah. It shows the usual corrosive action of a hydrocyanic or virus agent. <laughs> Most uh, classically phrased. Please study the picture carefully. I will then request the results of your observations. I don't have to look at that. I got it all figured out. You have? Sure. Haven't I been working on this thing for the past six weeks? Who did it? Nobody. I couldn't get no clues, so I called it suicide. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And, uh, what are your deductions, gentlemen? I think Connors put the poison in Stanton's eye. And it got rubbed off on Steele's glove when he hit him. What motive could Connors have in killing his own fighter? Well, uh, well, uh, he, uh, never thought of that. <laughs> <laughs> I believe McGuire rubbed the poison on that glove between rounds. He was the closest to Steele during the fight. George is right. McGuire's in the ring, you know. McGuire didn't do it. No, I think one of the seconds had a motive. Connors is the man for me. Oh, no! no. Quiet, please, gentlemen. All of your theories are very interesting. However, I regret that you have overlooked one most important fact. I fear I must remind you that the basis of all deduction is a careful observation. Will you please come nearer to the desk? Let us perform a little experiment using white ink to represent the poison. Now, if the poison had been rubbed onto the glove, a stain similar to this would have resulted. You'll notice the two stains bear no resemblance whatsoever. Same. I get it, Mr. Morto. You mean the poison on the murder glove was shot onward from outside the ring. A most excellent deduction. Please demonstrate your theory. Well, 
Now I gotta reopen the case again. <laughs> Just dismissed. <laughs> Mr. Moto's theory is swell. Only I can't seem to figure out how it works. In the first place, if this was Steele's corner, how could the murderer squirt the poison from over here? I don't know. Unless he had a hose. And he couldn't have had that because we would have seen him. And besides, I got no more time to solve this case. I've got to go up to Steele's camp. Old man McGuire hired me as Bill's new lover. Gosh, that camp's a place to look for clues. I bet if I went with you, we could solve this case. No kidding, do you think so? Sure. But do you think you can get me in? Leave it to me. Come on, I got my car. Oh, oh, oh. How do you like that? Some cop in that classroom stole my coat. <laughs> Forget it. There's no one there now. You can investigate tomorrow. Some wagon, huh? Gosh, it's a beaut. Say, so you left your motor running. I know. I always leave it running. On account of, I can never remember where I put the keys. Lieutenant Riggs, please. Hey, look out, that stuff might explode. Nothing will explode, Mr. Riggs, except my theory. Should the test prove negative? Well, what's the dope? Our light-fingered friend, Mr. Wellington, has stumbled on something important. The coat he, shall we say, stole from a Mr. Howard is stained with amaron. The same poison that killed Mr. Stanton. Say, we're getting hot, Mr. Moto. And the guy that's gonna feel the heat is John Howard. Come on with me down to the police station. I'll have the Detroit police question the tailor who made this overcoat. And meanwhile, I'll put a trace around every Howard in the country. Come on, let's go. This is some car. How fast will it go? Well, I haven't had it long enough to find out. Hold the hat. Here we go. your way, doing about 75. 75? I'll fix him. So the champ says to me, he says, the next time you fight that guy, remember, he telegraphs his left. Then what happened? The guy knocked me out with his right. Don't try to run. I'm going to give you a ticket. What for? Speeding. Where's your driver's license? Sure. I've been robbed. Ah, that makes two tickets. But, officer, you can't do this to us. Why not? Well... Huh. I can't, huh? Well, I'll show you. Listen, officer, we're in a hurry. Well, I'm not. Don't try anything funny. I got you covered. Please, don't shoot. We haven't done anything. Oh, is that so? 
Well, what do you call speeding? Driving without a license and stealing a car. So that's how I got this crate. Go on, get out of here. Go on. Go on. That's Kid Grant, that's new sparring partner. Looks as if the sparring partner is getting all the work out. I can step in the ring and stop Bill Steele right now. Anyway, what's the use killing myself for a fight that may never come off? Listen, I'll have Steele in there the night of the fight. And I'm telling you right now, you better be in shape. <laughs> He's training for the battle of his life. That's just what he'll get. Now that I got Connor's training the champ, go on, give him an eye for him. All right. I'm giving this fight the greatest publicity buildup in history. Radio, billboards, skywriting, throw sheets. It's on everyone's lips, from the mouths of babes to the drooling of ancients. I can see the headlines already. Champ, KO'd by Killer Steel. Yeah? By the time that happens, you're gonna be too old to see. You ready? Time. Well, how's that? Terrible. What do you want? The lowdown on Moran. I gotta set up the betting odds. You just saw what happened. And the same thing will happen to Steele, too. Well, you won't lay a glove on him. I'll give three to one, he flattens you inside of eight rounds. I'll take some of that money. Nice layout you got here. We like it. It's cost you some dough. So what? It comes easy? Sure. When a guy gets hunches at a hundred grand a hunch. What do you mean a hundred grand? I only took you for thirty. How about those other bets you planted all around the country? I got hooked for twenty percent of that, too. I don't get you. You're not kidding me, Nick. I know you got somebody to spread that money in Chicago, St. Louis, Kansas City, and a lot of other spots, too. The same bet. The Stanton wouldn't go five rounds. I wouldn't shoot my mouth off too much if I was you. <laughs> well, I guess you guys have a lot of things to talk about. We better be going, boss, huh? Right. And listen to me, Moran. Don't kid yourself about Steele. You might regret it. <laughs> I'll depend on you to have him ready. He'll be in a pink. Yeah. You trained Frankie Stanton, too. Well, I wish you luck, champ. Hey, Joey. Tell those guys. Did you get that, Gabby? Did I? There's what we've been looking for. Nick laid off a hundred grand in bets all over the country, so it wouldn't knock the odds down. Yeah, if we can only prove it. Let me do it. I'll grab a plane tonight. Good. Go to my office and get your expense money. I don't care what it costs. All I want is Bill Steele in that ring against Moran. I can see him coming down the aisle right now. Wire me the minute to get any information. Okay, boss. Medium height, medium build, medium complexion. I'd have to be a medium to find Howard from a description like that Detroit Taylor gives me. This whole thing is driving me goofy. There's a guy by the name of Howard in this town. There must be, I know, because there's his overcoat. Of course, he went to Detroit once to buy that overcoat. But then he came back here to bump off Frankie Stanton. But nobody ever heard of him. And nobody but that dumb Taylor ever saw him. I'll find that guy if I have to turn this whole town upside down. Homicide Bureau, Riggs speaking. Lieutenant Riggs, I've been murdered. It's Gabby, he's been murdered. Hey, what is this? What do you mean you're murdered? I demand protection. I'm a pay tax, a tape tax, a... Give me that phone. Hello, Riggs. Tom McGuire. No, no, he's all right. Just scared out of his pants. Somebody took a shot at him. Yeah, we'll be right up. Somebody just took a shot at Gabby Martin up near Steele's camp. Oh, so? Gabby, is he hurt? No, nah, they missed him. And I presume Mr. Gabby did not hesitate long enough to obtain any description of the marksman. No, he never saw him. It was another mystery man, just like John Howard. Perhaps it was John Howard. Huh? Who's John Howard? The guy who'll save your boyfriend Steele from doing a stretch in the pen if we can find him. Well, what are we waiting for? Set a police boat at the foot of Lake Street right away. Right. Come on. Of course, none of you people knows anything about the attack on Gabby. You were out doing road work when Gabby was shot at. I know that because Miss Benton tells me she was following you on a horse. She would. I don't expect you two to give out with anything. The same goes for you boys. Gabby, 
Maybe you ate something that gave you a bad dream. Listen, Lieutenant, I gotta know when I'm shot at. The gun went bang, the bullet went zing, I ducked. Yeah, and now you're full of embalming fluid. That's very funny. <coughs> now... <coughs> oh, you like chocolate, huh? I've often noticed that the dog and the human are very much alike. Each will go to any length to obtain something he desires or to destroy something he believes dangerous. Uh, undoubtedly, someone considered you dangerous, Mr. Gabby. Why? Because you know something about the Stanton murder. What did you say? Look here, Gabby. There's only one way to protect yourself, and that's to tell the whole truth. Now, you know why you were shot at. Get to the point, Mr. Benton. Gabby and I overheard a conversation this afternoon between Nick and Clipper. Clipper was accusing Nick of having placed some heavy out-of-town bets on the Stanton Steel fight. The bet was that Stanton wouldn't come out for the fifth round. Gabby and I decided to make a quiet investigation. We didn't get far. You know the rest. It might prove interesting to trace those bets. Oh, what a story to put under a banner headline. As long as you're printing it, add the fact that Benton also had a bet of ten grand on that fight. Oh, so? Holding out on me, eh, Benton? Is he telling the truth? Yes, but I never mentioned it because I guessed wrong. You see, my bet was a legitimate one on Stanton to win the fight. Okay, I'll check that later. Now, I'm going into town to get a line on those bets. And get this. Don't anybody go where I can't find them or he'll end up in a cell where I can. Lieutenant, maybe you better lock me up right away. I don't want to get shot at again. Ah, you're perfectly safe. The investigation you started is in my hands. Sure, I know it, but does the guy that shot at me know it? He's gonna know it. Mr. Benton, you better come along with us. We may need your help in checking those bets. Hey! Which one of you is Lieutenant Riggs? I am. Well, I'm Sheriff Tuttle. I got your phone call, but I couldn't get here no sooner. Say, I got a couple of suspects for you. I picked them up in a stolen car, right down here on the road to the camp. Yeah, where are they? Right here. Come on. Come on, step. Come on. Gee, Wellington, look. It's Mr. Moto and Lieutenant Riggs. Oh, what a laugh we'll have on the shelf now. You better be careful of them. They're pretty tough customers. Oh, that's swell. I like them tough. Hello, Mr. Moto. Hiya, Lieutenant. Hey, they seem to know you. And they have good reason to, I assure you. I congratulate you, Mr. Sheriff, on capturing two extremely desperate criminals. And I suggest that you keep them in safe custody until called for. But, Mr. Moto! Shall we leave for the city at once? Yeah, yeah, sure. We're wasting time. Wait a minute, hey, Mr. Come Moto! On, you two. Go on, Come on. Here. Say, what's the idea of leaving those two in the jug? My friend, the usual way to avoid trouble is to lock it out. In this case, we lock it in. Oh, yeah. If that idea of Benton's is any good, I know a couple of guys are going to sweat plenty. Hello? Ready with St. Louis. Okay, put them on. Sure. I covered 20,000 bucks in the Stanton fight, two and a half to one. The guy's name is John Howard. Yeah, 15 grand. I paid him off here in Cleveland. That's all I know about it. Who? John Howard, he said he was. John Howard? Yeah, that's the guy. I paid him 20 grand. Came to Detroit and collected the day after the fight. No. No, I haven't seen him since. John Howard, John Howard. I've heard that name till I'm going cuckoo. Detroit, St. Louis, Cleveland. That guy covers more mileage than a six-day bike rider. Yeah? Now it's Kansas City. All right, let's have him. He took me for ten grand. What? Sure. He told me if I want to get in touch with him to wire him at the Edgemont Hotel. Right here in town. <laughs> oh, boy, oh, boy. At last we got to leave. The Edgemont Hotel, come on. Isn't it strange that a man who gambles like a prince should live here like a pauper? Oh, he's probably just using this joint as a hideout. Well? I'm looking for John Howard. What room is he in? He don't live here no more. You leave an address? Yeah, County Morgue. What? You, you mean he's dead? We found him in his room. The doc said it was a heart failure. Well, how do you like that? We finally spot the guy, then he lays down and dies before we can make the pinch. Well, I guess that's the end of the case. Perhaps only the front end, Mr. Riggs. Huh? I don't get you. Mr. Stanton's death was also apparently natural. 
until the autopsy revealed to the country, like that fortunate gambler, Nick, I also have a hunch. Yes, I'll order a post-mortem. May I suggest that you also check Mr. Howard's fingerprints? Yes, yes. Huh? Oh, fingerprints. Oh, yes. I was just thinking of that. His name's not Howard. It's Whitey Goodman. Remember him? So that's who he was. Whitey was an ex-con. He was out on parole. Oh, so? May I see the record, please? Death was due to heart failure, all right. But the heart failure was caused by a poison known... Don't as... tell me I know. Amarone. All right. Thank you. There's no argument about it, Joe. Goodman, I mean John Howard, or whatever you want to call it, was just the ball guy in this case. He made the bets for a second party and then got bumped off after he collected. How can I be sure Steele isn't that second party? Oh, I admit the overcoat points to Howard having killed Stanton. But there's nothing to prove that Steele didn't knock over Howard. I'm sorry, gentlemen. I don't deny the facts you present, but I still feel them insufficient for lifting Steele's indictment. But we're not asking you to do that, Joe. All we want is for you to have the boxing commissioner lift Steele's suspension and let the fight go on tonight. That's all you want, eh? With the man under indictment. What for? If the fight is permitted to occur, I hope to produce the murder before it's finished. You mean a fight will bring him out in the open? If I were sure of that, I'd sell tickets myself. To reveal a snake, one must overturn the rock. Get me the boxing commissioner. Okay, Bill. Sure, I am. All right, Steele. Who do you think you're shoving? Say that. Wait for the night, Bill, to knock his block off. You never saw the day he could lift the chair. All right, all right. So, all right, lay off. We'll run you both in. You know, there's a law in this town against fighting outside the ring. What's the idea of stalling us, Riggs? How about a statement on Steele? Is the coroner going to be the referee? I tell you guys to stay outside. Nobody's giving any statements around here except me, and I ain't got nothing to say. Now, well, come on. You can't take a press like that. Why all this secrecy? Yeah, that's what I'd like to know. Who pulled the strings to get this fight on tonight? I plead guilty, Mr. Crowder. You see, some people save strings. I pull them. I suppose you got a good reason for sticking your nose into this. Oh, yes, a very good reason. Mr. Riggs and I have promised the district attorney to arrest the murderer tonight at the ringside. Why wait till then? This is Mr. Morrow's party. I don't know exactly what he's got in his mind. All I know is I got a nice pair of braces for the guy when he points him out. If it's one of us, make the pinch now and get it over with. You appear strangely anxious, uh, Mr. Kipper. Uh, say, listen, Doc. There's a fight going on tonight. We'll examine my boy so we can get out of here. <laughs> Come on, Steele. Well, calm down, Bill. Your heart's pounding like a trip hammer. That's the way I'll pound Moran tonight. Well, you're going to use a hammer this time, huh? Oh, yeah. You fake it up. Wait a minute. Easy. Put your hands down or keep them out of your pockets. Now open the door and get down the hall of the service elevator. I suppose you know kidnapping is punishable by death in this state. So is butting in other people's business. Go on, get going. If I should decide to resist, you wouldn't dare to shoot me. The noise would attract attention. You want to get going? Yes, sir. What happened? Oh, just a little scuffle. Well, are you hurt? No, thank you. Do you know who he was? No. But I think we have a mutual acquaintance. Thank you, Lena.
Evening, Lieutenant. You sure hope your bluff works, Mr. Morrow. In poker, the man with the poor cards very often wins on a bluff, doesn't he? Sometimes he gets shot trying. Wish I knew who sent those mugs after you. I think I know. Who? The murderer. I've got the man placed as you ordered, Lieutenant. Okay, Smitty. This place is so full of bulls, it looks like a rodeo. I can't figure out why Mr. Motor left us here in the clink. I don't know, Wellington. Pop used to leave me in jail once in a while, too. Guess they figure it keeps us out of trouble. If you ask me, I'd say it's Professor Jealousy. That's it. He's afraid we'd catch the homicide. What would you do with the murderer if you did catch him? <laughs> what would I do with him? I'd hold him until the cops came. And if he tried to take it out of the landmark, I'd, I'd shoot him. Watch out, it might go off. <laughs> it wouldn't hurt you even if it did. Fuck it. <laughs> you certainly had me scared for a minute. Look, look at that. That's the murder gun. Wow. Take it, take it away. Put it down. It's full of poison. Where did you get it, Wellington? Let me see now. This is one time you've got to remember. That gun's a clue to the murder. I'm trying awful hard. Come on, knockout. Come on, come on, come on. It's no use. Say, sometimes I remember things when I get hit on the chin. No fool. Take a poke at me and see, huh? Go on, hit me hard. What do you think? I got a grass jaw or something? Hit me. No, no, no. Hey, do it like this. Get the idea? I think I get the idea. That's the technique. Now throw another one. Can you remember now? What's going on in there? Ah, breaking up the county's property, huh? Well, you better be saving your energy for that there rock pile. You've got to let us out of here, Sheriff. We, we just made an important discovery. Show him the gun, Wellington. Uh, put that thing away. Don't be afraid. It's only a water gun. It's full of poison. Poison? Well, throw it out the window. No, no. Give it to me. Look, Mr. Sheriff, you've heard of the Stanton murder? Sure. Well, that gun's the one that killed him. Oh, with a water gun? How do you know, and what are you doing with it? He found it, and there's some of the poison we shot out of it. Hmm. Say, it appears to me you know a heap about this Stanton case. I'm one of the detectives working on it. So am I. Have you boys been drinking? Of course not. Now look, Sheriff, let me show you just how Stanton was killed. Yeah. Uh, get over there, Wellington. Now, here's the prize fight ring. Yeah. This is Stanton. Yeah. You're sitting over here, and your name is Connors. Ain't it tall? It's Tuttle. Sheriff Tuttle. Connors was Stanton's manager, and you're just taking his place. Oh, I guess that's all right. Now, uh, let me have the water gun again, Sheriff. Nothing doing. Look, Sheriff, you're playing the most important part in this whole thing. But I can't go on if you won't help me. Don't you realize the publicity you'll get if we crack this case open? Well, if you put it that way, here you be. But remember, no tricks. Thanks. All right, Wellington. Uh, move the sheriff into position, will you? Keep your eyes on the arena. Yeah. Remember, the victim is about to meet a terrible fate. Yeah. Here we go. Yeah. The fight is on. Yeah. The men weave about. Oh, yeah. I'm the murderer. Yes. And I can't get a beat on Stanton no. because the men are moving too fast. Yeah. Well, what do you do? I move over to here. Yeah. At last, I see an opening. An opening. I point my gun. Oh, yeah. Then I shoot. Shoot. Splash and make a getaway. Yeah. Hey, you let me out of here. I'm sorry I can't finish the case for you, Sheriff, but I'll let you know what I do. You go to Alcatraz for this. Bird! Oh, Bird! What a crowd. What a crowd. I certainly worked to put this one over, boss. Of course, the fact that it's a championship fight had nothing to do with it. Maybe it helped, but I wish we could have a murder for every fight. Well, I gotta go down and show the gentleman of the press how to spell the word colossal. And I'm going down to see Bill. You've been seeing him quite often, haven't you? Oh, why not? He likes me, he's young, good-looking, and the next champion of the world. Listen, Linda, I shouldn't have to tell you anything about this game. You've grown up in it. And love it. No, you only love the glamour and the excitement of it. Why, I've seen boys like Bill come and go for years. I've built them up from chumps to champions. And I've seen a lot of them end up just where they started. 
Of course, Bill might be the exception, but I do hate to think of my little girl taking a chance on it. Darling, you are breaking my heart. <laughs> well, anyway, go down and wish him good luck for both of us. He's still my choice for the championship. And mine, too. Be careful, Bill. Don't worry, honey. You're just nervous. I can take care of myself. Yeah, that's what Frankie Stanton thought. Lay off, honey. You'll have him all upset. Now, when you get in that ring, I want you to forget all about Frankie Stanton. And her. Don't think of anything but that championship. And you'll win it. Okay, Tom. Well, good luck, Bill. Keep your chin up, Penny. Yeah, keep yours covered up. Uh, just a minute. If Bill wins tonight, he'll be champion. That's what you want, isn't it? Naturally. And you don't care if he gets half killed doing it? Maybe you'd rather see him lose. And I can't stand to see Bill hurt in the ring or out of it. All you care about him is that he's the coming champion. When Tommy Callahan was champion, you were just crazy about him. You dropped Tommy when he lost the title of Kid Burke, and you went around with Burke until he got knocked out. You wouldn't give Bill a second thought if he looked like that. Would you? You're darned right I would. Semi-final coming up. Training on beer and blunts was your own idea. Now you can take your beating. But after tonight, you and I are through. In that case, maybe you'd like a little short end dough against your boy. Maybe I would. What do you mean, short end dough? Well, the odds are two to one. The steel wears you down and stops you in five rounds. Wait a minute. Don't you start pulling any of that five round stuff tonight. I'll stop that palooka in the first round. What happened to Frankie Stanton ain't gonna happen to me. You never can tell. Some of these days, I'm going to plant this right on that guy's chin. Save it till you get in the ring. You just haven't got what it takes. Now, try again and put a little more English on it. Hey, wait a minute, buddy. Try this. Poison along tonight? Sure. Right here. Now fighting. Hold, please. All right. Hold it. All the players in our little poker game seem to be present, Mr. Riggs. Things ought to start happening any minute now. splash when Moran hits the canvas.
just let Moran carry the fight. Biff hasn't laid a glove on him. You better watch that referee then. Somebody's giving him an awful beating. <laughs> Excuse me, Miss Benton. McGuire wants you to come down to Steele's corner. Thank you. You can't let him whip you, Bill. It's for the championship. That's all you care about. You've got to stop it, Tom. I know what I'm doing. Oh, please, before he's badly hurt. It's all right, I tell you. Now go and sit down or I'll have you put out. That goes for you, too. But you sent for me. That's the first I heard of it. Keep your shoulder up, Bill. He's swinging high. He crowds you. So roll with the punches. Good evening, Miss Benton. Oh, good evening, Mr. Moto. Come up. Clipper McCoy. He went upstairs in the elevator. Okay, when he comes down, keep an eye on him. Right. Hey! Hey! Darn it, I knew we'd be late. Anybody in there? Sir? We want two good seats down front. Sir, we're sold out. We're sold out. Do you know who we are? Sure, a couple of guys that ain't gonna see the fight. Why? Say, I know a place where we could sneak in. Come on. What did I tell you? He hit him with everything but the time pump. Then he comes back as fresh as a daisy. Ah, oh, shut up. I'll get him this round. Pardon me, please, but uh, we hope to catch the murderer within a few minutes. You'll be safe if you remain here. Oh, well, you mean you know who he is? I think we do. Linda, darling, if the criminal is loose in this crowd, the safest place for you is upstairs in my office. Now, look, Mr. Benton, I don't want to see you and your daughter get hurt. Stay right here. You can't endanger her life like this. You've got to let me take her upstairs. Come along, Linda. Wait. I insist that you remain. Thank you, Mr. Benton. Your own actions have proved that you are the murderer. And you almost committed murder trying to prove it. Permit me to correct you. I removed the bullets early this evening. When I announced that I would reveal a murderer tonight, I knew he would try to prevent me, so... I took the precaution of uh, looking under the ring, among other places. I deeply regret the necessity of using a father's love for such a purpose. All right, Benton! Hey, man, slow it! Stop that guy in great! Out of my way! That way! Hey! Did Benton come down this way? Yeah, he just took the elevator away from me. Hey, Mike! Jimmy! Watch this elevator grab anyone that comes down. Cover the front stairs. You take the back ones. Come on. 
Stand right there. What? What do you want? I found out this morning that you welched on a bet in Chicago for 50 grand. Uh, I made that good. Sure. With the dough you jipped me out of on the Stanton fight. You're crazy. I bet on Stanton and lost. You know that. That was just a cover-up. You're a smart guy, Benton. It took me a long time to catch up with you. Give me a chance. I was in a spot. I'll get the money. I'll pay off. This is the payoff. I was afraid Benton would do something like this. This is not suicide, Mr. Riggs. It's most unusual to shoot oneself in the back and without a gun. Well, I'll be... Every time we solve a murder, somebody murders the murderer. Now we gotta find him. Come on. Wait, Mr. Riggs. He will soon return by the only way he could have left. Yeah. Caught this guy coming out of the elevator with a gun in his pocket. It is most unfortunate you were so impatient, Mr. Clipper. The law would have dealt with Mr. Benton quite effectively. Well, come on, say something. Let's go. Take him outside. Now I remember where I got the squirt gun. Could it have been in the pocket of the overcoat you acquired at the ringside? That's right. Gee, Mr. Moto, this is the clue that will convict the murderer. Yes, but uh, the murderer is already convicted and executed. Mr. Benton's $10,000 bet on Stanton was merely a clever cover-up. His large out-of-town bets were on steel. And uh, to ensure those, he poisoned Stanton. Then he had to silence Mr. Howard, the go-between, who placed his bets. But how did you first become suspicious of him, sir? When Mr. Gabby alone was fired upon, although Benton possessed the same dangerous information. But uh, for the actual discovery of the clues, I wish to express my appreciation to two members of this class. Mr. Horace Wellington and Mr. Lee Chan. And uh, now I regret deeply that this term has come to an end. I must leave you, gentlemen. My plane takes off at... Uh, Here's your watch, Professor. <laughs> this course has sure done wonders for me. Now I can remember where I get the things that I swipe. <laughs> then you will undoubtedly remember this wallet. Why, why, it's mine. Oh, no, Mr. Wellington. It's the one you took from Mr. Lee Chan. <laughs> Class dismissed. <laughs>
I'm Vincent Price, and you're invited to my party in the house on Haunted Hill, where so far the ghosts have murdered only seven people. So won't you come and make it eight? You'll see human heads without bodies. Mysterious pools of blood dripping from the ceiling. The walls move slowly in against you. Don't try to escape, you can't. are waiting, so won't you join me in the house on Haunted Hill? Hurry, or you'll be late for your own funeral. Well, did you like the movie? I hope so, because me, my wife Judy, and production manager Dan LeClaire, we enjoy bringing you these old black and white murder mysteries from the 1930s and 40s. And if you enjoy seeing them as much as we enjoy presenting them, you can see the best of them right here, Black and White Murder Mysteries on Hastings Mystery Theater. Good evening. Donate from the links in the video description below. Also look for our bonus movie link in merch to buy.